In this lesson, we're going to go over the degree of unsaturation, which is also called the index of hydrogen deficiency. What this is going to tell us is the number of rings or double bonds in our compound. Now, knowing the number of rings and double bonds is going to help us out a lot when we try to draw Lewis structures. Also, when we look at NMR spectroscopy and we're given a formula but we don't know what the compound is, it's great to get a quick idea of how many double bonds and rings might be in your structure. So if the degree of unsaturation tells us the number of rings and double bonds, what we need to know is how many hydrogen atoms we should expect in the saturated compound. Now the saturated compound will have no rings, no double bonds, and it's going to be saturated with hydrogens. It's going to have the most hydrogen atoms that it can. We can use this equation, 2n plus 2, to figure out the number of hydrogen atoms in the saturated compound, where n is the number of carbon atoms in the formula. Let's do a quick example to get started. Propane has three carbon atoms, so let's use our equation to figure out the number of hydrogen atoms it should have. Plugging the number 3 into our equation, we can see that the saturated compound should have 8 hydrogen atoms. Now let's look at propane structurally to see why this works. Okay, so here I've drawn out three carbons bonded together, how propane will be. Now what we need to do is add on the hydrogen atoms. We know that every carbon atom needs to have four bonds, so let's draw sticks on the end to show that. So our end carbon will need three bonds to have its four bonds. The middle carbon is already bonded in two directions, so we just have to add two extra bonds on there. And our other terminal carbon needs three bonds. Okay, so filling in four bonds for every carbon atom gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, hydrogen atoms, so that's why our equation works. Now imagine we bonded each of these end carbon atoms into a ring. Well, when they're bonded, they'll have an extra bond already. In order to avoid making five bonds to carbon, we have to lose one of the hydrogen atoms from each carbon, so the number of H atoms in the formula containing a ring is two less than the saturated compound. Okay, now imagine adding a double bond here. We need to get rid of one H atom on each carbon to add the double bond. So we can see when we introduce a ring or a double bond into our compound, it's going to decrease the number of hydrogen atoms in our formula by two. Now let's write up an equation for the index of hydrogen deficiency. To calculate our index of hydrogen deficiency, we're going to first look at this formula. We'll calculate the number of hydrogen atoms in our saturated formula, and then we'll subtract the number of hydrogen atoms in our given formula. Now remember, we're losing two hydrogens for each double bond and each ring, so if we simply divide this by two, this will give us the exact number of double bonds or rings in our compound. Everything's so much clearer with an example. Let's take a look at a couple. Okay, let's figure out the index of hydrogen deficiency for C3H6. Up here, we already calculated that we should have eight hydrogen atoms in the formula, but we have six. Let's set up our IHD equation. So, eight hydrogen atoms for the saturated compound minus the six in our given formula divided by two is one. So now we know we have one double bond or one ring in our formula. Now we can make a hypothesis about our structure. Let's first start by introducing a ring. Okay, in our ring structure, each carbon starts off by having two bonds. So we need to add two more bonds onto each carbon to give the four bonds that carbon likes to have when neutral. Now if we add on our H atoms, we can see we have two, four, six hydrogen atoms, and that agrees with our formula. Another possibility for our structure is one that has one double bond. Let's see what that'll look like. Okay, here's our skeleton of carbon atoms. This end one already has two bonds coming from the double bond, so we need to put two H atoms on. This central carbon will need one additional bond, and finally, this terminal carbon has only one bond and needs three substituents. Adding in our H atoms, we can see that we again have six. 
So this structure, cyclopropane, and this structure, propene, both are possibilities for C3H6 formula. In our next example, let's explore unsaturation in the formula C3H4. We're still using C3 here, so we know that our saturated structure should have eight hydrogen atoms. Here's our equation to compare our saturated structure with the formula we're given. And this equation gives us a degree of unsaturation of two. Okay, so what are our possibilities? Well, we could have one ring and one double bond in it. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so our top carbon needs two substituents because it's bonded in two directions already. Now these two carbon atoms have a double bond and a single bond, so they already have three bonds to them. They each need one additional substituent. Adding on our hydrogens, we can see we have the correct number of H atoms. And knowing the degree of unsaturation helped us to draw this very quickly. Okay, there's a couple other possibilities for this structure. One possibility is that we have two double bonds. The only way to draw that is to connect each of the carbon atoms with a double bond to the next one. Our central carbon already has four bonds, and each terminal carbon needs two extra bonds since it's double bonded to the carbon beside it. When we add in our H atoms, we see that there are four, and we see that this structure works for our C3H4 formula. Now earlier, we said the index of hydrogen deficiency gives us the number of rings or double bonds in a compound. But if we have a degree of unsaturation of two, we might also have a triple bond. We can add our triple bond here or here because each of those will give us equivalent structures. Okay, so now let's inspect our carbon atoms. The central one already has four bonds. This terminus needs one additional bond because it has one, two, three bonds from the triple bond. And on this side, this carbon only has one bond, so we have to add three. Adding on our hydrogen atoms again gives us the four from our formula. So a degree of unsaturation of two can either mean one ring with one double bond, two double bonds in our structure to give us this allene, or we can get an alkyne because two double bonds come together to make a triple bond. In this lesson, we looked at how to calculate the number of hydrogen atoms on a saturated hydrocarbon using the number of carbon atoms in the structure. We then looked at how to compare the actual number of hydrogen atoms in a given structure to determine the IHD. The index of hydrogen deficiency tells us the number of double bonds or rings in a compound. An index of hydrogen deficiency of two can mean one ring and one double bond, two double bonds, or a triple bond. KP here. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up on the way out, and for more chemistry, subscribe to my channel.